Good morning, everybody, or afternoon or evening. I have no idea where you are, so hope you all are doing well. I will uh, continue to click the, uh, the admit button as people come in. I see some new faces. I see some familiar faces, so glad to have you all here. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we dive in? Let's just start by going around real quickly, just so we're all accustomed. Uh, tell, tell me uh, who you are, where you're from, what company you're working with. Anybody can go first. I'll go. <laughs> I'm brand new. I just got hired on last week, and I'm in the middle of training. And my name's Kim Turnbow, and I'm out in Laguna Hills, California, and I work for Matchstick Marketing. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Sandra Moore. I'm with a company called Content Bacon, and I'm here in Houston, Texas. Hello. Awesome. Thanks, Sandra. Oh, I like your Kathy. kitty, Kim. I can see your cat in the background. <laughs> I know. I can't control her. I can lock her in her room, and she knows how to open the door. So I don't, yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I've got two that might make an appearance, so... <laughs> At least it's not a barking dog. So it's not going to be go. that annoying. I don't think. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I'm Kathy Mozingo. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, ideal OTT. Awesome. Welcome, Kathy. I'm Dan Violet. Uh, I'm working with Meta Growth Ventures and Journey Front. And I'm up in Bozeman, Montana. Oh, cool. Awesome. Welcome, Dan. And oh, did I not go? Am I supposed to go? Didn't know which order I was in. Alphabetical order, didn't know what was going on. <laughs> well, my name is Brian Coulter. I'm also working with Meta Growth Ventures through Alumo, and I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Awesome. And uh, my name is Jeremy Smith. I am with uh, Journeyfront, and I am out of Salt Lake City. Awesome. Utah, in case you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, I was going to say, you got to be like a radio announcer. You've got a really good microphone and a great voice. <laughs> uh, well, okay. That's a great job. I'm from uh, KFWB. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. I need a microphone. <laughs> Dandrus, you're up. You're the last one here. All right. I'm Sandra Jackson. I'm working with Plus Delta, and I live in the Greensboro, North Carolina area. Awesome. It's fun seeing this crew come together. Um, you know, for those of you who've been here before, we've actually had very low uh, turnout. And so we've had like a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, um, you know, coaching. And, and I always appreciate that time. And I always love this kind of time where we can learn from each other. And so here's how our training is going to go. I usually start off with some short training, some kind of inspiration, something that you might need to make it through the day or the week or the month or whatever is going on. And so we'll do that. Then we're gonna dive into um, some specific Q&A that you all might have. You all are operating a very similar system. If you haven't gone through the training yet, I know some of you are new, but if you haven't gone through the training on the Metagrowth Prospecting Formula, that's usually where a lot of the questions come up. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of a magical thing that I discovered on accident. It was not an intentional thing. It's like champagne or post-it notes. You know, it's just like, wow, this like really works for what I, want it to do. And so we usually have some questions about the uh, prospecting formula. And then we'll dive into like some specific things. So like today, Siandris has a really cool thing that she's working on. And so we're going to spend some time actually working with her. But I think in observing that, if you want to stick around for that, um, you'll, I think you'll learn some things that might help you as well. And we may have people kind of jump in uh, from time to time. Uh, and so that, that will happen. We're not going to interrupt everything. You're welcome to stay for as much of the training as you want. My feelings will not be uh, hurt if you decide to leave or you've got another appointment. All I ask is you, you throw up a little heart and then peace out, right? So whatever, whatever you need to do. So th this time is here to serve you uh, in that way. So we're going to start off with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of training. Let me uh, mute this because there's an ad that's got to run on YouTube before the video starts. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, and I don't know why on earth you would possibly know, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell from Joe's body today, but I was a fairly adept athlete. I was a, uh, a decathlete in college, had Olympic hopes and dreams. And, you know, when you put in a lot of effort like that, um, it's interesting what you learn about yourself, about other people. 
um, when you do that. And so this video today, I want to, I'm going to, I'm actually going to play the video twice, probably not the whole thing twice. Um, but I think some of you are going to need this message today. And I think it's always valuable to look at this. So the first time I'm going to play it, I just want you to observe the video and I want you to pay attention to a couple of things. What do you believe is going on in the mind of the people who were observing in this video? So you'll be able to read the story and you'll, and you'll see what's going on. Then I'm going to stop the video, I'll rewind it, and we're going to start playing it. And that's where I'm going to want a lot of interaction from all of you to dispel your thoughts about what's going on. So if you guys are good with that, give me a thumbs up and we'll dive, and we'll dive right in. So <laughs> sit, sit back, relax, and enjoy this inspirational message. Okay, so that, yeah, <laughs> it's like, welcome to the waterworks. It's, it's a powerful, it's a powerful message. You guys saw that last screen. If you don't give up, if you don't quit, you cannot fail. It's like if I had one song to sing to salespeople, that's the song. That is where I see people who fail and what ends up happening and especially in the sales world this you you guys probably have friends or this might even be your story you go to a company you get hired you get some kind of base for some period of time and then all of a sudden you know you're doing some work and then all of a sudden it starts to get hard and so then what do you want to do you're like throw in the towel i can go over here i can go get a base over here for some period of time and there's this cycle and you never push through to the thing that you have to do to succeed and so then you feel frustrated because you've never really achieved what you wanted to achieve. Now, let me, let me 
So I, I told you I was going to go back. We're going to watch parts of it. And then I want you guys to tell me the thoughts. And I'm going to ask you specific questions and then observations in general. I hope that you'll find hope and inspiration from this. I think this is what some of you are going to need for today. Then I promise we're going to get into some technical know-how and, and uh, things like that. But I want you to watch this. I'm going to pause it at specific thoughts. And I want you guys to tell me what you believe is going on. And sorry for those of you who need to hear songs end. I know I cut it a little short. I apologize about that. Okay, so what's going on in, in this guy's mind right now? What's happening in, in this guy's mind? Absolutely nervous. Preparing Why? his mind for what he has to do. Yeah. What what makes him what makes him nervous, Dan? What what makes you say that? Um, you know, I used to you know, run track as well. And it, it seems like no matter how much effort you put in and practice, when you get to race day, it seems like you've forgotten everything that you tried to remember about 30 seconds before you get in the blocks. So you have no idea what you just spent the last, you know, two weeks working on. And right. you have to really calm yourself, remember the words, remember your mantra, remember your step count, all that stuff. And that's what he's thinking about right now. He's got, you know, 18 years of training going into this race. So it's, it's a combination of being horribly terrified and yet having to focus in the middle of it. Good, good observation. Love it. What else? What else, what else do you guys observe going on in his mind right now? Hey Dan, I want to touch bases on that too. Um, you know, nobody knows your body like you do. He may have already felt an inclination of something was going to happen. You know what I mean? Um, as in the military, when we did our PT, I knew that I was going to cramp up. I, I knew like doing the push-ups or something like that, my shoulders might give out. I knew, you know, it was, it was a full warning. Your body's going to tear you. Um, he he might have felt that he was just off. I'm going to give it my all, but he knew something was just off, which meant I added to that extra nervousness. That is, I've never heard anybody, I've done this training quite a bit, and I've never heard anybody say that. I think that's really interesting. You know, when, when a human being is pushing that body as hard as it pot at an Olympic level mm -hmm. on a world stage, you're pushing your body to failure every single race. And so I think that's a really interesting observation. He may have known something going on. So I'm going to keep playing here. For those of you who know anything about track, you may know that the middle lane is the favored lane. So when when you're in the, the insight, if you guys have ever seen like actual sprinters live close up, especially the 400 meter, most human beings could never keep up with them even for 20 meters. Your fullest sprint can't keep pace with what they're doing for 400 meters. So that inside lane is a little bit too tight of a turn. It kind of slows you down with the G-force that you're, and then the outside, you have a little bit of a disadvantage because you don't see the people that you're competing against. That middle lane, lane number five, is the favorite. As you can see, what, does anybody know this guy's name? Who, who, this video is about. What's, what's this guy's name? I forget his name. I think it was Derek, wasn't it? Der Derek Redman, right? So, it, I mean, it, it just said it on the screen. I was curious if anybody caught it. Can anybody, can anybody on planet Earth tell me the, the winner, the gold medalist of the 400 meter sprint in 1992? Probably not. Look down here. Can you see that over 21 million people have gathered inspiration from a guy who came in last? So to fast forward a little bit, and we'll keep going through this exercise a little bit, but I wanna fast forward to the end. Your response to the things that happen to you dictate a lot i don't know if the gold medal medal uh, winner received a standing ovation from sixty-five thousand people or not but i know that derek redman did i know the guy who pulled a hamstring and came in last because of his choice to i'm going to finish this race i i, I have forgotten about the timer and now we'll tie this i've forgotten about how much income i'm going to make i've forgotten how much x y or z is going to happen I'm finishing this race. 
sometimes just your response to the things that happen dictate a lot. And over 21 million people, and that's on this video, there's probably other clips of it, of people receiving inspiration. So let's talk a little bit more through this. new moment what what's going on in his mind now he's in a lot of pain he's devastated probably well he's in a lot of pain if you've ever if you've ever played uh, athletic sports and had a severe injury like this we all know it, it's yes there is physical pain but the emotional pain is so much more severe. It, it's the, it, it's, it's not a representation of a loss of a race. This is a, rep, a representation of a loss of a way of being. This is, I, I'm the, I'm the favored. I'm the gold medal champion. That's going to be my story for the rest of my life. I'm going to show my grandkids my gold medal. And in that moment, Yes, he's in physical pain, undoubtedly. If you've torn a hamstring, you know. But also, torn hamstrings don't hurt a ton right when you do it. They usually hurt really bad after you know something happened. Um, and so, yeah, what, what else do you think is going on in his mind? Probably upset that he disappointed all his family and his friends and um, the people who were rooting for him as well, I think. Hmm. So there's there's some processing going on uh, because he you know obviously makes a choice shortly thereafter to um, complete the race. So even though he's he's uh, upset, obviously he he didn't let um, his feelings of disappointment uh, overtake the winning spirit that he had inside of him. Yes, you you can see it. I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, there's a lot of processing going on right in this moment. What am I going to do? Let me ask you guys a question. How, how many of you have felt this way right here, not physically, but just in your career, in your life, in your marriage, and whatever it might be, have felt that way? So talk to me about what your decision in this moment of processing, what, what was going through your head when you were feeling this way? You can't let that moment define you. like so many people do. I mean, you think about like, like you've been down this road before, you've hit so many, so many, so many failures, you've ran into so many brick walls, you know where that road leads to, but you don't know what the road of actually getting up and continuing to fight through this pain actually leads to. This would be a whole new venture for you. If you're ready to actually, when you can finish processing this and going through it mentally, you've been broken down so many times, you know, you know this feeling, this is a comfortable feeling. But I don't recognize this thing. I don't recognize this exit. I want to. I want to go down this exit. It may hurt. It may be some more stumbling blocks. But I'm gonna find a way to get down this road. You know, that's that's that that's that new venture down there. I know exit 395. I don't know exit 495. I want to go down exit 495. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what else? When when you were feeling this way, what was going through your mind? I read a book once that said. Uh, Every, every challenge or every perceived failure on the other side of it, if you push through, there is a blessing or a reward of equal or greater magnitude. Um, so as, you know, um, as, as the gentleman just said, sorry, you weren't on my screen to get your name, but, uh, you know, once you finish kind of going through that mental, you know, pity party, um, making an active decision to know that there's reward and you don't know what that reward's going to be. But if you push through that moment, um, that it's usually brighter on the other side. Yeah. There's probably a lot of anger too. I mean, I, when I hit those moments, I'm like really angry. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think also he was probably in fear. I know I would be the fear of the unknown what's to come. 
Mm -hmm. Am I going to heal from this? Um, there's just so many things that you wouldn't know, you know? Yeah. Like, like we all can face, you know, I, I think the general sentiment is we, we have a, I, the bottom line is what I want you to recognize is in this moment, we have a choice to make. Uh, candidly, some of you are in this moment right now. I don't know all of your stories intimately, but some of you may be in this moment right now. You're feeling fear. You're feeling like feeling what's next. You know, is this, is this going to de define me for the rest of my life? Whatever that might be. If you're in that moment, all I'd encourage you to do is to make a unique choice. Most people in that pain are going to hobble off the track and go away quietly. There's no cameras that are, well, maybe in, the, in Derek's case, they might've filmed him just to see his reaction because he was the favorite. Um, but most people are just gonna kind of roll off the track they're going to go away. They're going to go see their trainer. They're going to put some icy hot on their hamstring and start, you know, mending, you know, whatever it is. But Derek made a very brave choice to fight through pain, to hobble his way around. And I, and I do want to fast forward to this moment where, where his dad comes on to the, uh, onto the track. <clears throat> so we'll go right here. Down on mountains, you raise me Man, sometimes doesn't it feel like we're hobbling along like this too? Mm. It's like, what the heck is going on? Nothing's working right. What am I doing? Am I really going to finish this race like this? I look ridiculous. If you guys have ever had to run like this, I have also pulled a hamstring. And when you have to run like this, you feel ridiculous. This is not me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sometimes we do feel like this. Sometimes we do look like this. Who? Oh man, if I were really in a mood, I'd, I'd drop an F-bomb right now, but there's too many people on here and we're recording. Who freaking cares? Who freaking cares what you look like, right? Mm -hmm. Just do the work. So watch this moment here. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. What, what's going on here? I think just like um, a feeling of of support that that shared burden. I think that's that empathy that uh, you know I've read a lot of books and different studies on. Uh, one of the most powerful things that humans can do together is share the load of like pains and sorrows and difficulties that they've proven over and over again. You know, just like babies in the ICU or uh, something like that, that just having another person in that moment is what shoulders the, that shared uh, pain. So that's literally, uh, when you have that other person there, no matter who it is, um, that is what is able to literally help support that other person to finish what they're going through. Yes. I, I think that's so spot on. And I think you know, if you look at if you look at how Derek was acting, right, he was hobbling his way through the rest of the race. Did he need his dad to come on? Probably not. My guess no. is he probably could have hobbled the rest of the way. But look at what happens in this moment where dad's there and he's like, oh, like I just I needed that shoulder. Didn't even know I needed that shoulder. So one of the things that I like to point out in this, and, and as you watch this, you probably find yourself identifying with different people in this race. You might identify as Derek and you're like, hey, I'm hobbling, I'm running, I'm doing the best I can. I thought I was gonna win. What the heck is going on? You know, all this kind of stuff. Some people identify as dad and they're like, I'm, I'm good. So I, as, as kind of founder of Metagrowth, I identify as dad and I'm like, I'm just going to be there. I don't, I'm not running the whole race with you. I'm not fast enough to run the race with you, right? I can't do it. I'll drive you to practice. I'll pick you up from practice. I'll give you everything I can as dad. I'm going to come along. And for a portion of this race, Metagrowth is going to be here to just be a quick shoulder for you to rest on. And then we're going to let you run the rest of the race and receive the standing ovation. Some people, crazy enough, identify as the track assistant who's pushing dad away. No, 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 you can't come onto the track. 
I got to protect the rules of this race. I got to protect the integrity of the Olympics. We can't just have people willy nilly coming onto the, they didn't know it was his dad, right? So different people identify with different people in this race. So what I would encourage you, and Dan, I think you said it really well, people need this. People need this. And even in your moments of hurting, because guess what? Dad was hurting there too. Kim, you said it. It's like, you know, Derek's worried about, gosh, I'm probably letting dad down after all of this. So dad might be sitting there feeling like disappointed and discouraged. And gosh, my son's hopes and dreams are all just shattered. But in the moment of pain, I'm going to go do what I can do. And we all have some ability to do that. So I don't mean to belabor it, but I, I hope that you guys received something from this. More than anything, what I want you to stay focused on is this, is this final statement. <coughs> this, this is true. This is true. When you don't give up, you cannot fail. It's amazing what can happen. And I think you guys may or may not know this core value of Metagrowth Ventures is an optimistic attitude. So there's two, two elements to that. A three feet from gold mentality. If you're familiar with the book, Think and Grow Rich, there's this concept and we can do a whole nother video on that some other time. But it's like, if you were mining and there's a whole story that goes with this, it's worth, worth watching. I will probably do that next week. But it's like every strike of that pick into the mine is the belief that there could be the quartz vein that reveals the gold. Every strike of that pick, like this could be it. And so every time you do an outreach, every time you do a sales call, every time you do it with the same level of gusto and fervor in belief that this is the strike that's going to reveal the quartz vein where the gold exists. The second part of it is to never give up. And those are two different things. This is an example of never give up. He's not going to win the race. There's no chance that he's going to win the race. But this is an example of never give up. That's different from three feet from gold. So those two mentalities, I believe as a salesperson in your mind are crucial. When you have a commitment to never give up or to always persist, something magical happens. And I, you guys, I, I've worked with people, here, I'll pull this off here. I, I, I've worked with human beings who do not have anywhere near the skill level that all of you have, but they have they're, they're earning hundreds of thousands or even into the millions of dollars a year simply because they refuse to quit. I mean, if you were to analyze their sales calls, you'd just like cringe. It's just like constantly, it's like, oh, your voice is horrible. You're not asking the right questions. You're a freaking moron. But because of your inability to quit and because of that persistent attitude, they accomplish success. And so I, I want you to carry, that's the message I want you to take away from the training from today, you know, from right now, is if you adopt that as the mindset, it's just, it, it does not matter what happens. I am not going to quit. That will take you where you want to go. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I saw something else in that video too. Um, we get what a gold medals every four years. Okay, gold medals, yes, your name lasts for a couple months. They're still playing this video. At that time needed, we didn't need another gold medalist. You know, we needed inspiration. You know, everyone stood up for that. That was more needed at the time than I think another gold medalist. Like you said, I don't know the guy's name. I had to look him up to see who it was, but I know who Derek is. I know, I remember that moment. It, that moment was more impactful than you running across that line at 100 miles an hour. You That's know, because right. in four years, somebody else is going to do the same thing. Might be passing me. But in four years, I really doubt that somebody's father is going to come help somebody cross this finish line. I think that was more impactful. That really is what more stood out. Again, we didn't need a, we, of course, you're going to get a gold medal. Somebody would have won that race. Anybody right. could have won that race. If you started that race, somebody could have won that race. That situation alone was way more impactful than what was needed. Maybe even around the world, what was more needed than just having another gold medal. Uh, that's, it's from a, from a really large, like macro scale. Mm -hmm. I think you're spot on, Brian. I mean, it's like, it, this is, and guess what? We live in the same time today. We need those stories. We don't need gold medals. We need, need those stories. Now, ironically, when you're talking about sales, that kind of perspective, that kind of attitude, that kind of mentality tends to lead to gold. It's not gold medals, leads to gold, leads to mm -hmm. money. And so let's, let's shift gears a little bit. And I want to start to talk a little bit more about tactical, <laughs> uh, tactical implementation. So you guys are all hopefully in the regular activity. And, and I know some of you might be newer. Hey, how you doing? 
That's right. Kitties <laughs> oh. and children's. <laughs> That's right. That the day. <laughs> so in in this, you know, in this, I'll call it the sport of sales. It is a contact sport. And and I hope you guys all have this mindset. I know we talked about this a few weeks ago, but you know, the the attitude that comes to just persisting. So every no, you should celebrate each time somebody shuts the door on you, hangs up, you know, doesn't respond, whatever. It's like, cool. That's one no closer to a yes. And this goes back to my early days in sales training. I was in uh, the mortgage industry and my, I worked for my dad. He owned the company. And so he, he's, but there was, there were no silver spoons in the Arietto household household. You were going to earn what you got to keep. And so he had that back in the day, a title company would produce, a, they called it a farm. So it was like thousands and thousands of names. I was the guy calling you up. Hey, Kim, this is Joe Arrieta with American Trust Mortgage. Just wanted to call and see if you're interested in refinancing your loan. Like I was that guy calling at dinner time. I was that guy. <laughs> and it, and it, was, it, was really, it was really hard. It was really hard. Um, and at the time, I think I was like 20 or 21 years old. So I was fairly young. But what I found is like, if there was no other option, my job was to get through the list. It wasn't even really to get yeses. My job was to get through the list. And in two and a half weeks, I generated about two and a quarter million dollars worth of loans. Now I was in the San Jose Bay area. So it's a little bit easier because the loans are a little bit bigger out there. Um, but the point was, my dad told me something and he said, Joe, you have to understand there's a lot of rejection in sales and you should celebrate every time somebody hangs up on you because that's one person saying no closer to your yes. Whatever your ratio is going to be your ratio. Brian's is going to be different than Sandra is going to be different than Jeremy's going to be. Different. Everybody's ratios are going to be different. And a lot of that has to do with your skill. How good are you engaging with people? You know, whatever it might be, there's a million different things that go into that. Your number is your number. And it's important to know because if your number is 50 to one and you get to call, call 72, guess what? You've already stored some for your second. Yes right? Because you're going to get it. And then you're, it, it's just, it's just, an, it's a numbers game. So hopefully you all are every single day taking action, you know, proactive activities, doing whatever you need to do. So I just want to open it up right now for some Q and A about the prospecting formula, about what you're doing, what you need to be doing. Um, if this is brand new, feel free to ask questions and I'll try to tie it in so that it serves everybody well. <clears throat> I have a question. Go for it. Um, what is the prospecting formula right now? So there should be uh, in your training videos, there should be a just called Metagrowth Prospecting Formula. So there should be a series of videos that show you how to use like Loom and Sales Navigator and how to outreach to people. Um, so that, I mean, that's essentially it. Um, does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. How many of you are implementing the formula and like on a regular basis, on a daily basis? Cool. How, how's it going? Once okay. I got the hang of actually using the needs assessments, I don't know why I just started just setting appointments. You know what? You get in the phone with me, you, you're going to meet up with me. Um, <laughs> but it, it wasn't quality phone calls. I mean, quality leads. You know, some people were, I guess my attack mode, it was just motivational enough to get them on there without them even telling me that, hey, we're perfectly fine with what we're doing. Well, you should have told me that before we had this meeting, you know? But I wasn't giving them the opportunity. I wasn't asking the needs assessments questions. I could have literally deleted or not even waste, I can't say waste time. It's always great to meet up with somebody because they can also pass you forward. But I could have saved time on, I was literally setting maybe 30 appointments a week when I probably only need seven to eight good ones, you know? The rest of them were just, you know, entertainment questions and yes, we'll get back with you. And I'm setting up follow-up phone calls for a company that really don't need me when it's taking away time when I can really be dedicating to myself to the companies that actually do need me, um, that actually do need our services. So I figured, you know, once I got used to asking just two or three, and I don't have to go through the whole thing, just two or three needs assessment questions. Okay, you sound like you could possibly be a good fit. Now let's roll over to a good appointment. That's now that's the administration and let's take it from there. And then let's set up the next phone call with who can actually help you push this forward. My thing was, I'm, it was like time on a cable or selling a car to me. 
appointment, 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 appointment. It was a needs game. This to me, I'm shooting more for quality than quantity. I can do quantity all day long, but what's the point? I'm wasting my right. time, I'm wasting Metagross time, I'm wasting Alumo's time. There's no point in doing that. We can have a general conversation on the phone or through LinkedIn, but there's no need to set up that appointment just to look like Brian setting appointments. It's pointless if they're not going anywhere. Then these right. assessments, once I got really used to doing them, I didn't really like doing them at first. I just wanted to just get the questions, you know, laugh and joke around, open up, talk about my labradoodle. My five-year-old comes in, she helps shoot the pitch with me. Um, <laughs> and then let's set this appointment. But it's, it's, if it's not generating anything besides a quick conversation, you telling me that, yeah, you, you like what, everything that we have to offer, but it, it's not a really good fit for you, I don't think we need it. We should have had that appointment. It should have just been a general conversation. We could have found that out. Right. So those needs assessments are really, really, they slowed me down, but now the quality is much better. Like I'm right. now I'm in second and third meetings with CEOs and you know I'm past COOs where I need to be at. Instead of just meeting up with the CEO, I'm at the um the CPO. Now I'm you know I'm at the CHRO second meeting, third meeting with the whole team. That's where I want to be at instead of just having a bunch of one time meetings. Right. Let me let me um I'll use this as an opportunity for training as well. So when you find yourself in one of those meetings where you go this is really not the right person to talk to. You know what's amazing about human beings is they know other human beings. And if they like you, which hopefully they will, you know, after meeting with you, Brian, I don't know how any, anybody wouldn't like you. They're gonna be like, I'm gonna help Brian. I'm just gonna do whatever I can do to help Brian. <laughs> so in, in that moment where you recognize it's kind of one of those opportunities, there, there are two ways that you can go. One way is to kind of go fully down, down the road. And if you're newer, I would encourage you to do so. Like get the practice, get the repetition in of doing the sales pitch, whatever it is. And so get that rep in if you want to, if you want to do that. The other route is to use a magical phrase. And you can say like if Sanders and I were on and I'm like, Sanders, you know, I think in our conversation right now, I'm recognizing, I don't think that there's going to be a perfect fit for us moving forward. And I know the one commodity that we can never get more of is time. And so I'd love to give you the gift of time and rather than just continuing down this path, but here's what I'd like to do. And here's the moment is if you understand what we do, there might be people that you know who would be a good fit with this. Can you think of anybody who you think would benefit from blah, 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 whatever it might be. Stop, close your mouth and let them think. Because just like if you guys remember kind of old days computers, like you type a query in and then the computer had, it would have to think a little bit and then it would spit something out. Not the case anymore. It's lickety split. It just happens right away. So when we do this to a human being and we ask a question, like if I were to say, think of a color, you all are going to go, uh, you might look around the room and you go um, green. I don't know, whatever, whatever's going to come to your mind. Right. So how many of you thought green when I when I said think of a color? I don't know, maybe some of you would. Um, how many of you notice green right now? Just look around your room. Do you notice green? So it's it's interesting. And you guys know you, this is like my favorite game to play. Everybody take your right index finger and touch it to the tip of your nose. Human beings, for the most part, are very, very good at receiving instruction. We just are, we, we really are. So if you can show up as a leader and, and exemplify very good leadership skills, you can tell somebody, hey, Sanders, it sounds like this maybe isn't a great fit and I wanna give you the gift of time with the remainder of what we would have spent. But before we do that, is there anyone that you can think of that you think would benefit from blah, blah, blah? Allow their computer to work and Sandra's is going to be sitting there very uncomfortably. She's like, uh, I need to provide something. I like Joe. I think he's a good guy. I know this isn't a good fit. He wants to give me a gift of time. Yes, you should talk to so-and-so. Cool. Like, what, what do you think would be the best way for us to get in touch? And then all of a sudden, Sandra's is going to be, you know, making an introduction. So you could even do that with just one person. The other thing that you can do, and I think I spoke a little bit about this last week, is called your reticular activator in your brain. There's a part of our brain called the reticular activator. It serves to protect us. So if you've ever watched uh, the Superman movie, Man of Steel, you know, there's like, he's like, as a kid, he's like overloaded with senses. He can see like x-ray vision and like he has to hone his senses. That's what the reticular activator does for the human being is it keeps all the things that we shouldn't pay attention to out and allows us to focus on what we should. 
And so it's why like pregnant women tend to notice pregnant women, or when you buy a new car, you tend to notice that car all over the road. It's like, well, everybody bought a Mustang. Holy cow. Like what's going on here? It's because your reticular activator, that gate has allowed that information to come in. So and if you got ADD, cause I recognize everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, there you go. So that your, your retic you need to find your reticular activator. Dial up. So the, you know, the main point when it comes to this kind of conversation is if you draw their attention to something, they will think of something. So if you say, so it, it, can you think of anybody who you think might benefit from blah, blah, blah. And they go, uh, yeah, you know, let me think about it. For example, it might be a CTO at an organization who's implementing a new software. Pause, let their brain think. Or it might be a new CEO who's just entered a role and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Or it might be a company who's undergoing a significant amount of change and they need to receive employee feedback to know how they're doing. Whatever it might be, you can lob these little things. It's like passing the, you know, bypassing the reticular activator gate so that they can actually think of people. So my point of saying this is, even if you find yourself in one of those appointments where you go, this is not necessarily a great fit and could be perceived as a waste of time, you still can redeem that time and selfishly gain something from it. And even better than that, and I don't think I've seen anybody do this more uh, naturally than Sandra. Sandra is like, every single time we're on one of these calls, she's like, afterwards, she's like, hey, can you connect me with so-and-so? I've got a referral for them, right? So you can also give in that moment. So help me understand what you're doing so I can help you. Now you either redeem that time or give them the gift of the time. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Can you see how this could impact you like tomorrow or today? I mean, this is like immediate tangible impact. So even in those quote unquote wasted calls, you can still redeem that to both give and to receive. Cool. What else? Lady, they, uh, this is pretty interesting. Um, she does global sales uh, for, for Microsoft partners. Um, so she immediately, uh, you know, identified that uh, I'm the wrong person. And I knew that as well. Um, but I've just been going through the exercise of the appointments. And when I started asking her, um, you know, the assessment questions or, or the discovery questions, um, again, she let me know she has two degrees in this. Honey, um, I know what you're doing. Let's not waste time. And she gave me three really solid uh, referrals, um, you know, and also offered consulting services. But uh, like you said, sometimes those appointments, even though it's not the right person, can produce fruit anyhow. Massively. So that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll kind of throw a little add on to this. And this is kind of next level. We'll call this 301. This is not PhD level, but, but definitely next level is if you guys are familiar with the term Pavlovian theory or Pavlov's dogs. So it is a theory that happened that they believed they could induce an action based on something else. So what they did was they would feed the dog, at first they would feed the dogs while they rang a buzzer. And then ultimately as the um, experiment continued, they could ring the buzzer and the dogs would salivate. So just the sound of ringing the associative um, you know, connection between the food and the buzzer would cause the dogs to salivate even though no food came. So that theory can play true, I think very much so in human beings. And I had this done to me a number of times. So I had a friend who's in the mortgage industry and he actually abided by one of the principles that I taught him, which was when you receive a referrals from somebody, you always thank them both in word and in deed. So you send them a gift card. And I told them, I said, Starbucks is probably the, the uh, most ubiquitous, most used, most consistent product on planet earth. Like you could be in Dubai or Israel or, well, they don't have it in Israel anymore, but you could be anywhere in the world and they are gonna serve the same cup of coffee. And so, so he would send a $5 gift card every time a referral came to him, regardless of what happened with the referral. He was rewarding the activity of sending a referral. And I, I, I swear to you all on this call, I was like, I, I just want a cup of coffee. And I sent him a referral because I'm like, I'm just going to rack my brain because I want a $5 gift card to Starbucks. Now, it, it was like, and sure, sure as the rain comes when it's stormy, it's like that, that referral card came. Yeah, thanks, Joe, for the referral to so-and-so. Um, and so 
this is something else you can do. So when you find those relationships of people where you're kind of like akin to, and you're like, hey, this is the person who I believe has a Rolodex, date myself the Rolodex, but has a list of contacts that they can probably send my way. And you want to be intentional with it. Go find some gift card or something that you like. And the cool thing is now you can do it like immediately. You can Venmo them five bucks. You could do whatever. Thanks for the referral, you know, to so-and-so, you know, enjoy a cup of coffee on me or whatever it might be. However you want to do that. If you start rewarding that, you will start to train those human beings to think of you. Because here's what happens. We're all here face-to-face or not face-to-face, but digitally face-to-face right now. We're all on each other's top of consciousness. What happens the moment this Zoom call ends? We're going to start sinking in each other's consciousness, right? You're going to start to forget the training. You're going to start to do other things because you've got other stuff to happen. Now, if I were to call you or email you or ping you in the middle of the week, I'd immediately jump back to the top of your consciousness. So you can actually, if you do this properly and down the road, you can actually induce new referrals coming in just by sending, you know, thank you cards or gift cards or whatever it might be. Hey, Dan, just wanted to thank you for all the support that you've given me this last year. All of a sudden, boom, top of consciousness, Dan's going to go, who can I think of to send to Joe? What I I got it. You know, I got, you you know what I mean? Like you can actually train people to do this. So, and and it's not in a self, I mean, it's not in an only self-serving way. It's just allowing the processing power and connections and network of other human beings to, you know, come into your world. That's all this is trying to do. It's not, maybe it's manipulative, but I think it's manipulative in a good positive way rather than in a negative way. So my point is like build your networks and take good care of them. Nobody's doing this anymore. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. This is how business used to run. If you've been in sales for a long time, everything was, was networks. Everything was like taking care of the people who are around you. It's just not the case anymore. People are, you know, looking too internally. So if you can be that person who's thinking about others, and again, if I were to say the, the one thing, and some of you who are on this call, you know the foundational principle of the Metagrowth Prospecting Formula. The foundational principle is personalization. That's it. I don't care what the method is. I don't care if you use Loom. I don't care if you use Carrier Pigeons. It doesn't matter. The, the, the foundational principle is personalization. There are so few people in the sales world who are doing personalized outreach in this way that you will stick out in the very best way possible. People will set up appointments with you just because of the methodology, because of the personalization. Make sense? Mm-hmm. All right. What what other questions do you guys have? Questions, comments, concerns, whatever it might be. How can I help you? Um, how many how many contracts do we have in the for Meta Growth? How many companies are we working? With? How many companies does Metagrowth work with? Yeah. We, we've got about 40 clients. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. It's been fun. We, we, I, I will tell you, so the, this, if you guys are not familiar, I'll tell you a little bit about a hit, the history of the prospecting formula. I, I believe it's the key to your success. I really do. I mean, when, when you all heard Brian say I was setting up 30 appointments a week, you know, most salespeople are like, holy crap, like... I wish I could do that, right? So Metagrowth grew by, it was just over, I forget the exact number, but just over 1,000% in 2020. And that was from a dead stop, literally from zero, no salespeople, no nothing, just Josh and I kind of pounding the phones. And I discovered this uh, tool called Loom. It was the first one that I discovered. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like if I could send a personal message and I, just happened to be on a guy's LinkedIn profile. I was like, oh, it'd be cool if it was like his background because I was really connecting with him, not with him personally, but just like in what I was reading. And so I was like, oh, I'm just going to do a quick video. So I hit record on Loom and I was like, hey, John, good to connect with you You know, here on LinkedIn. I was just going through your profile because I like to get to know the people. I mean, the message was probably like five minutes. It was like way overkill, right? But when I sent it off to him, and he responded, I was like, wow, that was kind of cool. What if I did that with every new contact? Because nobody's doing this. What if every new contact, I was like, hey, Kim, great to get to you know, connect with you here on LinkedIn. I don't know if there's any way that I can serve you or you can serve me, however we can work together. But it looks like you're doing some cool stuff with blah, 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 like all these things. So I had genuine, authentic connection with that person in their profile. And all of a sudden, I started getting these messages back like, 
I've never in my entire career set up an appointment with somebody based off of LinkedIn messaging. I get these kind of requests all the time. I've never done this. I can't believe this is the first time, you know what I mean? And I was like, whoa, we might be onto something with this. Then I, then we started bringing on a sales team and we started teaching them this methodology and the feedback. I mean, we get feedback literally every single week, like over the top, ridiculous feedback. Just like if you're using the formula, you know what this feedback is because people are doing that. It is very, very powerful. And I will tell you, this is kind of God's honest truth to me. It was the first time in my career in sales where I felt like I had control. I felt like I pull this lever and I watch the machine do this. I push this button and I watch it do. Th I had full control over everything in my life as a salesperson. I could set up appointments at will. And if I needed more, I just did more Loom videos. Then we started getting really intricate with like the sales navigator, um, you know, searches. So we're finding your target, Brian, you're kind of talking about that. You have no target, you know, what do they say? Most people aim at nothing and hit it with amazing accuracy, right? It's just like, you know, just kind of willy nilly, just shooting arrows all over the place. <laughs> you know, if you, I love observing like Olympic archers or like really highly competitive archers, like what they do is incredible and they can like split arrows. I mean, it's like that, it's that intense. So the more targeted you get, and I highly encourage you, if you haven't um, investigated Sales Navigator, or like re if you don't really know what you're doing with that, hop back on another one of our trainings, or if we have time today, we'll go through it. That tool is like magical. Uh, it, it shouldn't be legal. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's like, it is, it's crazy. So if you, if hey, you- Joe, can real quick, if you're an, a veteran, you can actually get um, Navigator for free. I think really? for the entire year. Yeah. Awesome. I found that out a couple of weeks ago. So just want to throw it out there in case anybody's a veteran. Yes. So the, yeah, those, those series of tools, there's kind of this magical series of tools. Sales Navigator can generate really refined. I mean, really, really refined targeting. So you, and when you do that, um, you know, and, and I can walk somebody through that today, even if we want to, but it's like create that very specific list then you can start reaching out to them. Navigator, I think that the least expensive option is like $79 a month or something like that. The team edition goes up to 140. You don't need that, just the, the basic sales navigator. The second tool in kind of the series of tools for the prospecting formula is a tool. There's a series, there's a number of them that you could use. I like one called We Connect. So if you haven't received training on We Connect, it's like 50 bucks a month or something like that. And it will automate it will automate all of the outreach to those connections that you generated, those highly targeted connections on LinkedIn, Sales Navigator. It will take those and it will send a connection request for you. When I discovered this, guys, I was like, holy cow. So my, my network, when I started it, it was, I think, around 1,100 uh, contacts on LinkedIn. And in the span of six months, I was at over 6,000 contacts. I didn't send out a single invite. The system sent it out on my behalf. Then when somebody would connect back with me, when they would accept the connection request, it would show on my LinkedIn profile. Let me, uh, let me share my, let, let's do a little, would it help if I did a little uh, show and tell here? Sure. sure. The necklace or bracelet? Necklace. So we'll, we'll, pull up, uh, we'll pull up my LinkedIn here. So <clears throat> when you log into LinkedIn, and this is just, this is not Navigator, this is just on LinkedIn. You can click on this little button called My Network, and then it's always going to lead with, and I can't even believe this, I'm such a dork, I'm like not even responding to people, I've got like 221 people, you might have even reached out to me, sorry, if I haven't accepted that. So if I look on here, I can see this is always going to sort by, the, the default sort is by recent, uh, recent connections. So you can see in the past few days, and I don't have any of these systems running, so this is just kind of naturally happening now. So here's president and CEO of Datakin Incorporated, uh, Mark Andium. So I'd go in here and I want with each of my connections, I want to create this personalized outreach message. So I could pull up, um, you know, pull up Mark's uh, profile here. Um, are you guys, is show of hands, anybody using Crystal Nose, a tool called Crystal Nose? Oh, this is like- I used it for a while. It, 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 it was- pretty scary <laughs> it, it's like when i discovered this you guys i was i i literally i called josh up at like 11 o'clock and I, josh and i have a lot of like very late night meetings 
Uh, so we, we spent from about 11 p.m. to about 2.30 in the morning freaking out over this. I'm like, this is, we just kept saying, this is wrong. Like, this is like maybe even immoral. Like, this should not be allowed to be happening. So you can see this little, uh, it's a plug-in. So it's this crystal nose, uh, it's up here somewhere, yeah, right here. So it's a plug-in for Chrome. And when you click on this, you guys are just going to blow your mind if you haven't seen this before. I click on that little thing. And it's going to magically, with AI predictive abilities, tell me what Mark's profile is. So <laughs> it's going to tell me, here's where Mark sits. You can see I'm over here as kind of a, an, a mid I. He's a high D. It's going to say Mark is a moderate D, tends to be confident and fast paced, especially when working to achieve ambitious goals. I need to make a sales pitch or I need to, um, <clears throat> let's see. I mean, you can you can get all this uh, all of this stuff here. I need to schedule a meeting, get advice. For a D, it's best to mention that the meeting will not take too long. Use very concise language. Offer to do prep work for him. Use a matter of fact, serious tone. Uh, for a D captain, don't show up late. Don't be. It. This is magical, and I'm telling you about. It's about 80% accurate. When I've done testing, maybe a little bit more than that. And so when I reach out to Mark. Am I going to leave a long, run-on, elaborate, highly connective relational message? Nope, not going to do that. I'm going to be brief, concise, right to the point, and I'm going to. So, so I'll give you. I'll give you an example here. So I would pull up my Loom. I'd click. Uh, I've got the right camera going here. I've got his profile up here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because he doesn't need to see me so big. I'm going to click Start Recording. I'm going to choose application window, mark, I'm going to click share. Hey, Mark, good to connect with you here on LinkedIn. I'm not sure how we got connected, but uh, I, I know as president and CEO, uh, you're probably running 100 miles an hour and trying to figure a lot out. You got a lot of connections in the Dallas area. It looks like uh, you guys are up to some pretty interesting, uh, interesting stuff. So discover the true process in any organization. Man, we started implementing, I don't know if you're familiar with... Um, a, a book called Traction, uh, but Traction has totally changed our world. So my business partner and I started implementing it. It's highly focused on processes and systems and working with employees and all that kind of stuff. So I have no idea if that's of value to you or not. Uh, but anyway, good to connect with you. Wanted to send you a personal message. And listen, I'm not sure if it makes sense uh, to connect any further, but essentially companies hire Metagrowth Ventures to build their world-class sales teams. So we go out into the marketplace and we find great salespeople, we train them, and then we maintain them. We have actually coaching that we provide for them, uh, usually done at a really, really low cost. So it allows you to scale without all the, the headache of traditional sales teams. So anyway, if it makes sense to connect, uh, just click on the link that's in here. The uh, button just says, let's chat, gives you access to my uh, business partner, and my uh, calendar. We can find some time to connect. Either way, glad to connect with you here on LinkedIn and look forward to seeing if I can help you at all. That's it. Do that 50 times a day, you're gonna make as much money as you possibly want. So then I'm literally going to snag this. I'm gonna go into, we use HubSpot. I use a, a meeting link on HubSpot. Um, I'm gonna to go to sales meetings. I'm gonna to go to uh, introductory call. I'll just use this one. I'm gonna click on call to action. I told them that it's gonna say, let's chat. And then I'm gonna paste that link in here. You can change the color of it if you want to. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do. I'm gonna save that, copy the video link. I'm gonna go into here. I'm gonna message, because I'm a first degree connection with Mark now, I can send him a message. So I'm gonna put that in there, I'll click send. It usually takes a moment to register, but you'll see the thumbnail will pull up. So Mark is going to be able to see that it's his, this is not some generic video. This is his uh, profile here. So that process will generate all the leads that you want. Do that with a highly targeted group of people and your world is gonna be made. I'm telling you, if you do this, um, if I go back to, uh, to my network here. Hey, there's Jeremy, I'll accept you. <laughs> I, I like never do that. See, this is good, perfect. So get a little message in there, get that connection going. So if you just go in here and literally every day, your job is to make sure to get through every single person that makes sense to go through, right? So, you know, CEO at Al Alameda Mortgage Corporation, how funny, that's probably where I grew up. So anyway, each of these people, 
And I love that messaging. It's like, now normally what I would have done um, with, uh, with Mark, for example, is take about 60 to 90 seconds to, to comb through his or her, you know, whoever you're talking, like actually go through the process of going, okay, what can I connect with in here? I could have done a much better, much better job of that. So he's been doing this for a year at Datakin. Uh, he is the founder of another company doing this. Look at this. He's in three roles. He's currently a partner, a co-founder and president and CEO of three different companies. So I probably would have touched on that a little bit. Um, go down here to see if there's anything. Uh, LSU, uh, board experience, Mutiny FC. I think that's probably a, a soccer club. Um, yeah, soccer association. So I would have told him about you know playing soccer in high school and my kid playing soccer and all of that. So there's all kinds of ways that you can connect with people. The main thing you want to do is be authentic. Be authentic in this process. And this was coaching uh, that I received from, if you guys are familiar with a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk, um, he's you know highly prolific content creator. And what he said and what I would just encourage you with every ounce of my being is never re-record. No matter what, never re-record. Um, usually people want to re-record when they're like, oh, they fumble their words or they say something stupid or, or whatever it might be. That process of re-recording goes into the world of like perfection and perfection is never going to yield enough volume. You want your volume to be high. So in order for your volume to be high, touch it once, get on to the next thing, right? Send that message out, get on to the next one. The next one is more important than the one you just did. If that makes sense, get to the next one. You want to get to 50, 75, 100 of these a day, go for it. You can do it. If you turn the automations on, if you use Sales Navigator, we connect, you'll generate about 20, 20 to 30 new connections per day. New connections with targeted people. So my encouragement is get through every single one of those new connections with this personalized effort. Commit to never re-record, which makes you be authentic. You can't help but be authentic develop the skill of doing that. You'll get better and better at it too. Um, give them specific instructions. So just like I told everybody, put their finger on their nose, you want to do the same thing here. So you'll notice I said, click on the button that says, let's chat, set up some time with, you know, my, my co-founder and I, and we'll explore blah, blah, blah. So give them specific instruction, not kind of willy nilly. So make the authentic connection, transition to a call to action, specific instruction on what to do. Does this make sense? What questions do you guys have about the process I just went through here? I um, have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You first. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I was just wondering about some numbers like um, connection requests per day. Uh, you know, for Journeyfront, I had spoken with you know Aaron Butler, and and he was, um, you know, and then also with uh, Yanni's uh, videos on the MGV, kind of like onboarding. He mentioned like fifty uh 50 or 60 a day i think and it stays within the limit of um i guess not getting dinged but i use sales navigator so is there any limit to request per day the so i have seen people get their wrist slaps you you have to be careful and cognizant now i think the personalized effort you're going to surpass uh, or kind of like bypass any spammy kind of feel um the spammier the world gets the better it is for our formula what yep. we do, the personalization is not AI-able, right? It has to yep. come from a human being and it means that much more. So I don't think you're going to get people who are like, I hate Dan, like you report him, you know, whatever it might be. You're going to have very, very little of that. As a matter of fact, usually it's going to be the opposite. Um, I turned the dials when I, I was using a system before called um, Zopto, create all these weird names. Um, so Zopto allowed me to do up to, I think it was 150 connection requests per day. I never felt comfortable going over a hundred, but I did a hundred a day for probably five months. Never once got my wrist slapped, never once had anything, you know, other than just growing my connections that was allowing me. And my connection rate was somewhere between, it would hover between 40 and 50%. So if I sent out a hundred invites, I'd have 40 to 50 new connections. I felt more comfortable at 50 per day. So you can do kind of whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, just recognize it is a gray area. I mean, this, this is a gray area. It's not black and white, but it is, it is definitely gray. 
And so when you're using an automated tool like WeConnect, although WeConnect is very, very safe, and WeConnect actually just allowed, I think they increased their limits to 100 per day. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, they increased it to 150 per day. I would, I mean, you can toy around with it and see what you feel comfortable with, but I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't push more than 100 a day. Um, but in the beginning, um, now keep in mind, so you guys saw like my network is now at 9,000. So if I did 150 a day, it probably would not um, trigger any alarms or anything like that. If you started out with 10 connections and you had 100 connection requests a day, that's where you can start to get into trouble. So if you're at a lower um, network level, then you might be a little bit more um, conservative in that outreach. So, and Sales Navigator will allow you to search thousands of you know, connections a day. And, and I'm telling you if, you, if you follow the personalization route, so if you go with like every connection, a you know, video like that, uh, you're never going to, you're never, it's, it's impossible. It's not spam. I mean, it defies the, the definition of spam. Great. Thanks. Yeah. What else? What other questions do you guys have? Um, do we, can we have um, uh, the system analytics and optimize, like, um, like say if we want to optimize the formula that we are doing for the, for meta growth, what can we look at? So, you know, if something is not working out, we could attempt that. If say, for example, other teammates are doing something and it's say clearly not working out, how do we get to that information? So I, I would say first, kind of like multiple levels for this. First is self-analysis. Um, if you use a tool like WeConnect, for example, WeConnect will allow you to see like the efficacy of um, you know, of your connection request. So I, I would say a healthy connection request is going to be anything over 25%. So if, if less than 25% of people are, are accepting your connection request, then we need to go back and look at your profile and say, how can we make this profile better? Have we done everything in our, in our ability to make this an attractive profile that people are compelled to want to connect with? So that, that would be kind of the first level is take a look at your connection requests. And if you, again, if you use WeConnect, it's very trackable and they show you charts and all that kind of stuff. If you're not using that tool, candidly, I have no idea how to track like, well, I sent out a hundred invites and who, who accepted them, who, who knows? Um, and so that might be a little bit more difficult. So from a granular level, take a look at your own efforts. Okay, connection requests uh, sent versus accepted. And then you want to be tracking and you should be tracking, uh, tracking in my sales toolkit every day. It's like new leads that you created. How many proactive conversion activities did I do? Those things can tell you a story. So from kind of a little bit larger macro scale, you want to be looking at how is my efficacy across the entire sales spectrum? Those ratios really, really matter. You need to know what your numbers are. There's no way for you to run your business. You, you guys all have your own business. There's no way for you to run your business without knowing your numbers. You've got to know how many leads does it take to create a new uh, you know, opportunity? How many of the conversion activities does it take to set up an appointment? How many appointments does it take to create a, a closed deal? Not all of you sell the same thing. We have clients that we work with that it's literally a one call close on the first call. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, it's Joe Ariota from Metagross. Just wondered if you had five minutes to talk about blah, blah, blah. Jeremy goes, sure. And by the end of that conversation, Jeremy sold into the system. We have clients who have that short of a sales cycle. We have clients who literally have a nine month sales cycle. And so your ratios matter for you. You've got to know what's going on in your world. And, and I will tell you, you know, salespeople, we are a different breed. We really are. We are so intensely freedom oriented. It's like we resist the things that we absolutely need to succeed, yet we continue to resist them. Tracking your numbers on a daily basis is one of the easiest ways to fix that. Like it, it is inexcusable to not enter your numbers every single day. Make a commitment to every day account for what you did. Be honest with yourself. What did I do today? Because we, we all know, and it, uh, some of my older training, I talk about the, uh, the dual-edged nature of the sword of freedom, right? The sword of freedom that you all wield as business owners, as salespeople is a powerful sword. It will also cut your freaking legs off. 
so that freedom can be your demise. And I encourage you to, you've got to assess that every freaking morning, right? Because you don't have to wake up. You don't have to show up anywhere. You really don't. And, and I know I've existed in roles like that where I'm like, I, I know, let, show of hands, who believes they have untapped potential? I, I hope you do. I hope you have untapped potential. And when I think when you look at that, you go, and if you kind of study the, the mindsets of like stoicism, for example, you know, the stoic mind says, yes, I can sleep in, but is my purpose to sleep in? That's a powerful question. Yes, I can X, but is my purpose to X? And so I think when you look at your goals and hopefully you've worked with your, uh, your performance coach to uncover what your goal, your goals are, what your goals specifically are, then you've got to ask the question, am I willing to do the work that my goals require? And at the end of every day, it's that moment of reckoning. Did I do the things that I needed to do to succeed? And I would just encourage you, do not let a single day pass. I'll call it business day. Do not let a single business day pass where you didn't take account for that which you did. That's one of the biggest identifiers of top performing salespeople. And what I'd encourage you, another one of our core values at Metagrowth is to be a meta performer. Don't ask yourself, how do I be the top salesperson? Ask yourself, what's possible for me? I'm not interested in being the best in the company. I'm interested in being the best that I can be. And sometimes the best that I can be is not the highest at the company. And sometimes it's multiple folds more than that. So daily tracking of your numbers is going to be absolutely, absolutely crucial to understanding what those ratios are. Cool. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So now from a kind, kind of another level, if we accelerate another level. So, you know, the question is, how can we learn from each other? So certainly inside of your companies, you guys should have um, group coaching that's going on. So hopefully you're joining the group coaching. All, all of these things obviously are optional. If you're in Metagrowth's world and you're being coached by us, then it's like, yeah, you better freaking show up and do the work. Like you, you don't get a coach. You're like you don't, Byron's on this, Byron. Hey, Byron. Hey, I thought it, I'd stop by. By, by Byron. AC Anderson. <laughs> li, li, literally, Byron is one of the best performance coaches on planet earth. And I, I can tell you, I can tell you from a lot of personal experience, I've worked in co coaching companies. I, I have something like 18,000 hours of individual coaching, consulting experience. I can't hold a candle to Byron's ability. He's got this expedious, you know, nature where he's just like, how can we get more? How, and if you guys have worked with Byron, you know this. And so what I'd encourage you is like, you don't get Byron without showing up and doing the work. Byron will kick you out of his world. You show up and generate results make it happen. Our coaching staff is unbelievably powerful. So tap into that, but then learn, you know, learn from each other. So when you're on these coaching calls, there is a lot of exploration about, Hey, I'm doing this. And this is a response I get. How can I change this? Or what can I do differently? So you all should be learning from each other in those meetings, but that's usually where that kind of data is going to come from. Ho hopefully I answered your question clearly enough. Yeah, that's perfect. I certainly took enough time to answer it. What else? Where else are you guys stuck? What else can I help with today? Um, here's a kind of a technical question, but do you, um, does Metagrowth have like, uh, you know, I would say like a series of call to action uh, scripting and stuff that you guys find successful? Or is that something you prefer that we develop with our individual companies like structures? What's, you know, just kind of learning about it, I guess. Yeah, yes to both. So the sure. um, there there is scripting that you should have access to. Um, and you said you were with Journey Front, right? Yeah, and it's nothing really. You know, it's just a few words that you can fit in the call to action button on the looms. Yes. Uh, but that was right now. Journey Front is setting up their their uh, meeting scheduling like platform. They you know right now it's through uh, HubSpot and setting up their meetings that way but then they might change that a little bit so in the meantime um you know aaron butler just mentioned maybe try he said that doesn't always have to be your only call to action dan he said go ahead and try something so what would you know for instance i just said you know i just linked to the actual journey front website and then in my connection yeah. uh response i said hey you know 
send a, send me a note here on LinkedIn if if you like what you find on the website and we can talk more. Yes. Uh, but what uh, would you recommend? Uh, uh, try all of it. So you're, you're going to find out what works for you. I can tell you for me, I would get giddy like a little school kid. Like I, I had, I had on my phone, I had notifications for Loom and for at the time we were using Calendly. And so yeah. I would get a notification. Dan watched your Loom video. I was like, oh, cool. Dan just watched it. <laughs> right. And then yes, all of a sudden, yeah. like two minutes later, Calendly shows up. Dan booked an appointment. Like, freaking yes, yeah. <laughs> do it again. Like this, like you yes. get, you should. I hope you guys get that excited. Yeah. You oh, get yeah. that excited when that stuff happens because it's like doing something on purpose that generates a result. So I don't necessarily care how it happens. If you if you kind of the nuance of that, I I think it's kind of cool to have that call to action button. Totally not necessary though. Like yeah. you can literally just put in the very next thing. And then when you're doing your loom video, just say, Hey, I dropped a link below this video. I'm going to drop a link to my calendar. Click on that link, right? Specific instruction. Give, you know, put yep. your right, ring, right index finger on the tip of your nose. So give them that specific. So doesn't matter how it happens. Now, I, I will say early on when there's less going on and I had more time in the sales process, when I get a notification that Dan watched my video, I would then either try to call Dan and I'd be like, hey, Dan, not sure if you got my video. I, I know you did because I just got it. But Dan doesn't know that, right? Dan just goes, holy crap, that's serendipitous. Like Joe's calling me. I was just watching his video. Like people believe in that kind of stuff. So it's like, <laughs> so I would I would utilize that tool to tell me who to contact. Like if, if it would pop up like yep. that, then I would I would just make a phone. If I had their phone number, I would I would reach out and make a call right in that moment. If I didn't have their phone number, I might send them an email right at that moment or another message on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, you can see when people are active on LinkedIn. So you know, if, if it's a, a solid green dot, that means they're on LinkedIn right now. If it's a green circle with white in the middle, that means that they have notifications on their mobile. So you'll know that they'll get it. And if there's nothing there, then they're not on and don't have notifications. So those kind of tools allowed me to kind of be that spontaneous, in the moment, serendipitous, calling you like right at the right moment. Um, and so I would encourage you to kind of split test that for yourself and figure it out. I can tell you on the, the, the ones, one thing that we have split tested quite a bit was the messaging that goes out in the connection request. And ironically, it doesn't necessarily even make a difference. So we tested like long, elaborate, like, you know, almost using all the characters that are possible versus literally a sentence. I think it said, um, love to connect and see if I can add some value. That that pulled at almost the exact percentage as like a really intricate message. So I don't think you need to get super fancy with the connection requests. Um, some of our salespeople use We Connect and those tools for follow up, like second, you know, secondary and tertiary messages that go out. I never did that. I think it's super fancy if you can do it and not get in trouble. Um, it kind of enters the realm of spammy from my perspective, but it can be effective. And so I think you need to, uh, my, my encouragement to you is like split test, but be intentional with it. A lot of salespeople I see come in and they're like, just, they're not split testing. They're just kind of willy nilly doing whatever they want to do. Split test intentionally. I'm going to take X amount of time and I'm going to send Y amount of messages with this. And then I'm going to test that against another data set. Be intentional and don't split test too many uh, elements simultaneously. Cause then you won't really know what caused, um, what, what affected the change if there was any at all. So, but like, for example, Loom, you have to pay, I think it's like 10 bucks a month for the pro version or whatever they call it, um, which allows you to put the call to action. It's totally not necessary. I just think it's kind of a cool factor. So if you're working in sales or marketing, uh, like uh, Matchstick, for example, right? Marketing company, cutting edge, like looks cool. All right, click the button. Oh, that's a neat experience. So you might, you might be thinking about those things. What is this person experiencing on their side? A journey front, same thing. High tech company, AI base, like you might consider like some of those things. Plus Delta 304, it's like cool, but it's like probably not necessarily high level consulting, not, ne not necessarily what you need. So um, I, I, I think those things um, ultimately... I think they can add to the cool factor, but the cool factor only goes so far. Does that answer your question, Dan? Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. You know, I'll just keep working with the journey front guys. And then uh, to your point about the, 
hey, we'd love to connect and see if I can add some value. Uh, I think I only embellished on that by maybe adding a couple more words, like in your hiring process or something. Sure. So Byron, Byron agreed with that. He's just like, you know, there's no real big, uh, you know, testable difference in your outgoing message. It just has to have something. Yes. And make it, make it short, concise, respect people's time and move on. Totally. And candidly, I mean, you guys saw my, you know, if you saw my LinkedIn profile, let me just pull it up here. <clears throat> You know, people who most of the time our salespeople are connecting with like CEOs or, you know, uh, decision makers. Like you can see, uh, if I hopefully this will work, see all. So, like, I, I'm not really paying attention to a whole lot going on. Like, I'm not going to, like, right here, you can see it does stick out a little bit that this one with a message sticks out more than, you know, Pat. So, Jesse is a little bit better than Pat's because I, I don't even. PMP, CSM, ITIL, what the heck? Like, I don't even know who this is. And I've got 200 and, you know, 221 of these sitting in my inbox. Like, I'm probably not going to take the time to even investigate, but I do see this. Looks like you do some impressive work at Metagro. Oh, why, thank you very much. That's like very flattering. I don't know. I'll see more of that, you know? So you could see what this is. Now, this is very blase. So I don't know, finance for thought. Sure. I don't know. I'll accept that. And then boom, here's that message coming through. So you can see how it looks on the other end. I just want you guys to get kind of a, a glimpse of what that looks like. Um, so, you know, just connecting, I don't know, whatever, leading leaders, former NFL athlete, mainly an athlete. Okay, fine. So this is kind of like how decisions are being made. Now, if he's got a, um, a, a secondary message that's going to come after this, if he does have an automation that's running for him, then I'll get another I'll get another message in X number of days or whatever he dictated uh, to run that. So anyway, I just wanted you guys to see like, this is why it can be important to have like a little message in there, a little bit of, you know, can I add some value? You can see there's not a whole lot that you can see. It's just like one quick sentence here. So if you can fit that there, um, you know, just keep in mind what the, the receiver of this message is going to see. Um, the other thing I'll say, and I've noticed this almost unilaterally across the companies that we've worked with. And I think this goes back to like Sandler training. I've never been like formally sand trained by Sandler or whatever it is, but I know that one of the principles is kind of taking leadership of a sales call. So when you show up on a call and you guys, if you've been part of my training, you know, this, there's two main things that you're looking to accomplish as a salesperson. Number one, you need to gain jurisdiction to speak into this person's life. And you can gain that jurisdiction a lot of different ways. Number two is you need to identify the number one pain point that they have that you can solve. So gain jurisdiction to speak into their life and understand what their number one pain point is that you can solve. Um, in the process of doing that, you need to show up as a leader. And so I encourage everybody, there is scripting for this. You all have in your sales script when you get to the sales appointment, it should almost always open the same way. Hey, Sandra, glad that we had time. Looks like we had 30 minutes scheduled on the calendar. Is that what you have? Sandra's either going to lie to me or she's going to agree to the time that we said we were going to agree to. So you're establishing the social contract. So when she says, yes, that's what I've got. Excellent. So there's three main things that I want to accomplish with our time. Number one, want to learn a little bit about you. No business is a cookie cutter business. So want to learn what makes you unique. Number two, want to tell you a little bit about what we do at blah, blah, blah company. And then number three is see if there's um, room to, uh, to work together in the future. Is there anything else you wanted to accomplish with our time? That little snippet, it takes very little time, but very clearly establishes you as the leader of the conversation. And most people feel very comfortable with adept leaders telling them what to do. It's really interesting. Most people feel very comfortable in that position. So if you can establish that, so um, Dan does specifically answer your question about scripting, that's the key thing that I'd want to get into there. They're going to say whatever they're going to say is on their mind. When you say, was there anything else you wanted to accomplish with our time together? Then they're going to, you know, kind of throw up whatever is on their mind. And then you can kind of take notes for that. So you all should have that scripting in your sales scripts. Um, and I'd really encourage you make a commitment to just live by that. Um, I, I started doing this probably maybe 15 years ago and it made all the difference in the world. There have only been a handful of times where I've yielded that to somebody else and it never goes well. Cause now it's like, I don't know what they're looking to accomplish. They don't know what I'm looking to accomplish. We kind of enter this world of like, I don't know, let's just have a chat for a little bit. No, thank you. 
Like nobody's interested in that. So that that's the scripting that you really want to dial in because it establishes you as the leader, makes people feel comfortable following your leadership. So, um, I mean, I'm looking around everybody on this call. You all are leaders. You all show up as very confident. Like I don't see, I don't see a lack of confidence in any of you. And so make sure show up as that leader. You know, it's a smile is your best friend, you know, like make people feel comfortable with you, all that kind of stuff. So um, that from a scripting standpoint, that's where I see people kind of fall flat is when they yield control of the conversation to somebody else who doesn't, they don't know what they're doing. You know, they don't know how to sell your product. You're the one who needs to show up as a leader. I know we're covering a ton right now. In about in about four minutes, I want to shift over to Siandris. Um, so Siandris has a really cool process that she's working on. And so I want to refine a little bit of that. Um, and so you all are welcome to stay on for that um, and kind of watch what we do. And I'll show you a few tools that I use to, to do some of these things. But in the four minutes before we shift over there, any, any other last questions or comments? Uh, I have a question. A couple of people mentioned assessments, a list or questions. Is that developed by each of their individual companies? Because I don't think I have one for content bacon. I mean, other than just going through the training. Yeah, each company is going to be different because you're looking to identify, again, when you're uncovering pain points, what keeps somebody up at night for content bacon is different. very different yeah. than journey front, for example. So, um, and Dave and Wendy do have those, they do have questions. They've got, I literally went through this with them yesterday. Okay, and so they, they have a series of questions, just ping Dave and just say, hey, Dave, what are the discovery questions that I should be asking in that initial, uh, uh, initial discovery call? Okay, great. Okay. And, you know, and candidly, I, I, this is probably, this is gonna sound arrogant. I'm sorry, this is gonna sound arrogant. But I feel like I could show up in anybody's world and sell anything. I really do. I mean, if I if I if it's ethical, if it's moral, you know, all that kind of stuff, I could show up and sell something. Because what I'm going to do on that call is I'm going to jump on and I'm going to ask them to tell me what they need. Mm -hmm. Like a really simple question. If you're on and somebody just no, oh, they're just like Mr. Perfect and they've got everything under control. It's like okay, like where do we go with this? Then I'd say you know, so Mr. Perfect, like. I know that we all experience difficulties in our business and what we're doing. I'm curious, what, what keeps you up? What, what wakes you up at 2 a.m. and keeps you up until 3 a.m.? And then let them think, right? Salespeople tend to want to kind of jump into the next thing. And this is one of those mindsets. I, I, some of you have gone through, I think, the um, asking good questions um, training, if you haven't. I, th I think it's somewhere in your training modules. If not, we'll, we'll address that on another call. Oftentimes salespeople feel like if I can just say the right thing, I'll get the sale. That's the mindset. If I can just say the right thing, I can close this deal. My perspective that I'd encourage you to shift to is if I can just ask the right question, we can work together. So if you can ask the right questions, the quality of your questions will dictate the quality of answers, will dictate the quality of the conversation and thus your relationship. And so that's one of those magical kind of, you know, the point number two is, can I identify the number one pain point that I can solve? So if you ask a question like, Kim, like I know you've got a lot of stuff going on and we're all super, super busy and it seems like you've got a lot under control, but what, what, keep, what wakes you up at 2 a.m. and keeps you up until 3 a.m. from your business perspective? And they're either willing to play the game or not. If they're not willing to play the game, that's okay. You just gain the gift of time, <laughs> you know, on to the next. Um, if they are willing to play the game, um, they will feel very comfortable if you ask that question the right way. And they'll tell you, and they'll tell you like, here, here's what my struggle is. This, is. this is what we've got going on. Then you make an assessment whether you can help them or not. Is that fair? So at ask really good questions, and then just be silent. Let them think. You know, I, I, we used to have a, a, a we, we called it using the mute button. Uh, so we had like Plantronics headsets and it had like a separate, if you guys are familiar with that, had the mute button and like the volume dial and all of that. So what we would do is in the process that I taught and you guys actually hopefully have experienced some of this is what's important about success to you or what's important about accomplishing your goals to you. And the, the job of the coach is to then be silent. 
let the human being think. And so we, our, our, our mentor and boss used to be, I mean, he would like physically come in and hit the mute button. Like he would like, he would like override, listen to the calls. He'd come in and hit the mute button for us. And I can't tell you how many times this happened where I had the mute button depressed, you know, and I thought they were done with their answer and I was ready to speak again. I said something, then realized I was on mute. And as I'm reaching for the mute button to unmute myself, the most important thing that happened transpired in the conversation came out of their mouth in that moment. If I had not been on mute, I would have interrupted that thought. I would have stopped that process and not uncovered that level. So I would encourage you when you're asking good questions, be comfortable with that extra beat of silence. And that's very uncomfortable for salespeople typically. Just be, be comfortable, become comfortable in that extra beat of silence. That will serve you really, really well. Awesome. Well, we're going to shift over into like highly personal for Sanders. If you're okay, Sanders, are you okay with that? Using the, your thing, I, I want to show you a few tools. So you guys are welcome to hang out as long as you want. Bye, Byron. Yeah. Thanks Bye. for letting me be on the call. <laughs> yep. Of course. And, and if you do take off, I, I, I understand it. Give me a heart and a peace out and then you can take off and um, just know we're here every Tuesday, same time I'm here to help in whatever capacity I can. Uh, usually with a, a point of inspiration, some motivation, some specific training. And then usually we get into like, uh, or I'm sorry, specific Q&A and then specific individual help. Um, sometimes we'll do what we call real play. So come prepared because what I might do is say, all right, Jeremy, so we're going to watch you work for 15 minutes. And we're just, and I'll just coach and give guidance. And there's a lot of cool stuff that comes out of some of you guys have been part of that. So um, you're welcome to hang out and see what we do. But Sandris, let's let's shift the uh, the focus to you. So, uh, and kind of for anyone who's hanging out, Sandris has a, a cool process. She's using a lead magnet. Um, so, lead magnet is typically something that you put out into the world as an offer to other people to engage with them. And Sandris has a tremendous amount of experience in the field that uh, Plus Delta three one four does. If you all have any referrals for her, but what they do is they work with change management. So anytime a company takes on a new system, a new platform, a new process, a new software, whatever it might be, adoption of that thing is crucial for the success of that thing. Oftentimes companies invest a lot of money into these new tools, but then they fail because the user adoptability is very low. So Plus Delta 314 comes in and has systems in place to make sure the adoption rate is very high uh, for what they do. And Sanders has a lot of experience on the implementation side. So she's seen these things get rolled out. And so what she's offering, what's, what's it called that you're offering, Sanders? An insight session. In, in a complimentary, a complimentary insight session. And what's the, what's the purpose of this session? Like, what would you like people to walk away with? Um, at basically have the, the, the goal is to kind of establish their jurisdiction. Um, so I do that by putting my leading with my consulting experience. Um, I'd like them to walk away with a key takeaway uh, from our conversation. And I would like to know enough about their business to be able to custom tailor a sales pitch to them. Um, ah, okay. Yeah. So kind of maybe two gives and then one and then one receive in this yeah, conversation. Yeah, I'm covertly kind of learning about their business in a way that's going to, uh, you know, give me insight into uh, where the opportunities and pain points are. Good. And that's, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's going to be one of the, one of the things that you are going to run into mm -hmm. is what's in it for you. Sure. So why are you doing this? So you need to have a really, really concise, very compelling answer to that. So if I were to ask you like, cool, Sanders, that sounds good, but what's in it for you? What would you say? Great question. Um, I'd, I would love to just learn more about your business to see if there, see if there's an opportunity to work together in the future. Okay, so this is all about you then. <laughs> yeah, bad answer. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not it's not a bad answer. It's better than nothing. Um, but but I would encourage you to um, maybe wordsmith it. We'll just kind of go on the fly with this a little bit. But if I were to answer that question, I'd say. So Sanders, truthfully, the reason I do these is this is my methodology for prospecting. I believe in the method of give and it shall be given unto you. So okay. I give a lot of value into the world uh -huh. with no, no strings attached and enough of those people become clients of mine that it makes the whole system work. 
I love doing it that way because I get to help a lot of people. And in so doing, I end up being able to receive the clients that I want. If there is a fit to work together, you and I are certainly going to know by the end of this session. That was amazing. <laughs> so that, that might be, so take that kind of wordsmith it. But I think if you can, I think if you can use something like this, and this is universal for everybody. If any of you are using any kind of tool like this, like a lead magnet, like I can think um, matchstick marketing, great example, right? Do a quick analysis on their uh, webpage, pull up some of the tools that you might have access to and say, content bacon, another one, go, go look at their profiles, go look at their social media profiles and go, you guys aren't producing shit. Like, what are you doing on a daily basis? You know, content is king, right? You know, this is where the whole world's going. So if you can provide that and say, what I'd like to do is provide this session to do this specific thing. This is what you will walk away with. They, they have to clearly hear, I'm going to walk away with this tangible or more than likely intangible benefit, but they have to know what they're going to get from it. And they have to believe that this is truly no strings attached. So, you know, when, when I used to do this and the, and the reason why I'm able to kind of roll off the tongue with, you know, some of this stuff is I did a lot of this when I, when I, when you guys experienced, um, we call it the foundations call where you're exploring your goals and your values and, um, and setting expectations. When I trained the coaches to do this, it's on the back end of, I did that about 1700 times. I lost individual count of how many of those sessions, but 1700 hour long, like core, like I had grown men crying on the phone with me at least once a week, right? Those kinds of conversations. I did that 1700 times before I, I stopped keeping individual count, probably somewhere close to 2000 now. But the point is like a lot of people would say, why you, you charge $500 an hour for your consulting? Why are you going to give me an hour for free? And that would be my response. This is my methodology for doing prospecting. I don't like doing cold calling. I like to make sure that I can add real value to your world. I end up with enough clients doing that. It works for me. Sure. So if we never work together, at least you'll walk away with some benefit and I'll feel good knowing that I've done some good in the world. So I think if you, if you all are using any kind of lead magnet, you have to answer those questions. What are they going to walk away with this specifically? And what are, what's in it for you? So if they're clear on those two things, then it's just a, then it's kind of negotiating time. I don't know. You're willing to give me 60 minutes to change your world. Okay, cool. So I think that's, I think those, those need to be addressed. Um, would you mind sharing your screen and, and pulling up that, um, uh, the document that you had created? Cause I have some coaching on that. I think that will help. And, and what's um, see? Oh, go ahead. Some of the changes that, that you uh, indicated. Um, look at, look at you. You're already implementing it. <laughs> so um click the uh, on the upper left hand side where it says zoom just click that negative uh yeah zoom out a little bit so we can see. yeah that's perfect okay so still a lot of words on the uh on the screen it looks like your image is um it is much better i don't like that plus three one four is still over your face um okay. I, I that's not it that should not be the prominence um i think your image might be a little bit big because who's that all about Sure. sure. <laughs> Make that smaller. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've talked enough about me. What do you think of me? So I think you want to, you know, be thinking in that perspective. It's like, how can I make it all about them? So what you might consider is putting some kind of insight, like uh, an image that would correlate with in insight. Okay. Right. So, so some images are very powerful, like very, very powerful. Most human beings think very visually. Um, and so I would probably encourage you to maybe change the format. What did you create this in? Uh, Canva. In Canva. Perfect. That was one of the tools I was going to recommend. Um, the other thing that you can do if you've never used, now your picture looks really, really good. Like that's a really, really good perfect. It represents who you are in every way. Um, confident, but friendly, you know, very professional. So all of that is good. If you wanted to, you can remove the background of your image. And that sometimes makes um, creating things like this uh, a little bit easier if you have a PNG background. So there is a, a site called remove or BG remove dot something, or uh, I, I can look it up and, and show you. You can drop your photo in there, click remove background. The magic of pixels and blah, blah, blah will remove the background and create a PNG image. So you can load it on top of that and kind of looks cool. 
So that might be one way to not have to have like a square image like that. Um, you know, so you might be able to change that. I do like those, uh, the little thought bubbles that you put there. I think that's really good. Um, the, the, what, where, where is this sent out from or what do you do with this? So I've been trying to send this in uh, LinkedIn follow-up messages. Um, it has not yielded anything. I've only tried it for a day, um, so to be fair, but it has not yield, yielded uh, any appointments just yet. So, you know, again, human beings, you know, index finger, you know, tip your nose. What, what are you trying to get them to do from here? Uh, book the complimentary insight session. So, I, and, and you can, you, you can probably see this now when you're looking at it, but it's totally lost in the midst of a lot of words here. Absolutely. Right. So I, I would, you want to draw people's eyes to what you want to draw their eyes to. Typically, um, I know on like website development, people go uh, upper left-hand corner, upper right-hand corner, scan down the right side, and then across to the left it was the, the latest data that I had heard when they were tracking that. So kind of the plus Delta 314 is the first thing they're going to look at. The second thing they're going to look at is a very clear level-headed thinker. Um, then they're going to go, probably their eyes are going to go down to digital transformation. And then book your complimentary insight session is going to get lost. If I were you, I would declutter this page quite a bit. Okay. Um, I would probably try to have less than 20 words on this. Um, not those little bubbles, but like down below insight, like have like, you know, 20 to 30 words, most of it around the book, your comp complimentary insight session. So what are they going to get from that? Um, make it very call to action oriented. Like it's not shocking to me that people are not taking action on it because there's not a whole lot of action to take from this. Sure. Um, and so uh, maybe even like where it says insight, reflective thinking turns experience into insight. It doesn't, it sounds cool, but it doesn't mean a whole lot. Sure. So I, I might draw the attention there as like, you know, uh, here's what you get. Now, the cool thing is after you have some of these, then you can change out those, um, uh, those thought bubbles to like actual testimonials from uh, people who've gone through the insight section. So it's like, here's what I got when I talked with C. Andrews about this. Right. Now, this is, I actually think the ones that you have there are very clear level-headed thinker. I'd probably put that one last on the list. Uh, one of the most brilliant abstract minds I've ever come across in the future. Only. So I'd probably do that middle one at the top. I do the bottom one in the middle and the top one at the bottom. If I were kind of ordering those from uh, a you know perceived value uh, okay. perspective, um, are you able to put like first name, last initial on those? Um, for it, it, here's here's what I'll say in in that case, if you can gain permission to use first name, last initial, that will be a little bit better. Okay, it's a little little bit more believable. Um, the digital, you know, the SAS implementation, change management, digital transformation, if people will take the time to read these strategies and insights. And yeah, I, I don't think people are going to, I don't think people are really going to read that. I think, okay. I think they're going to get lost there. So I'd probably just put SAS implementation, change management, digital transformation. That way they're like, oh, okay, this is the realm that she deals in. Okay. Um, yeah, and then and then get rid of the uh, you know that whole maybe drop that in between those dotted lines, so you know train change management, and then put the book your complimentary insight session, and then tell them in a very compelling way. Well, let's read this one hour session to focus on growing, optimizing, or solving problems in your business from an experienced consultant with broad software and business knowledge, who has solved problems for some of the largest, most complex, and distinguished organizations in the world. So. Uh, opportunity for everybody's feedback. What what feedback would you have for Sandra's? How is that compelling enough? How would you make it more compelling if it's not? I have an idea for her. Um, I've been in advertising for almost twenty years, so this is what I do: is edit other people's artwork or analyze it. The your offer, book your complimentary insight session. I would reverse that. Uh -huh. uh, maybe not the black or the dark black that you was use at the bottom with your name, but maybe a darker gray, because then your eye is going to go to that section. Okay, so kind of um, uh, shade the background of that. That, that Yeah, and maybe not do the dots, but definitely a reverse of some kind, because their eye is going to go straight there. 
Um, and the sentence is too long. Um, sometimes people get a little bit overwhelmed when they see something that long and they won't even look. People are so lazy these days. So <laughs> I would split it up into maybe two sentence, sentences, but also you're gonna want punctuation at the end. I know that's so silly, but the first thing I notice is the period's missing. And then I just look at that the whole time. I'm like, oh, the period's missing there and the period's missing here. But um, yeah, that was, I mean, that's, I love the quotes above, but I do agree with Joe, if you could use the person's first and initial, first name, last initial. Okay. Um, but that's, that's just, that's just me. <laughs> the, uh, and, and can you bring up a really good point that's applicable for everybody on this, on this Zoom meeting is it, they call it speed of copy. Mm -hmm. It's called speed of copy. When you see a big paragraph, it feels slow as a human being to have to consume and digest that much information. Mm -hmm. This is why you see, especially today, more than ever, you see lots of bullet points. You see lots of double space. So mm -hmm. when I when I write an email, and I, I, I've just, it's just second nature to me now. I don't care if it's an internal email to my employees, and if they don't read it and adhere to it, they're fired. I still will write it with this speed of copy in mind because I want to be, I want to be conscientious of what they're experiencing. So communicate with others in the way they need to be communicated with. So speed of copy would say that you don't want a sentence to be more than one line, ideally. Mm -hmm. If it is longer than one line, you're going to double space the next one. So you almost always want to have like double space so that people feel like they can consume this very quickly. It's why they call it speed of copy. Bullet points would be really, really good there. You know, what you'll get in your complimentary um, insight session, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. And then the call to action could be book now, for example. I mean, it could be book while, book before I change my mind. I don't know, like whatever, you know, add some sense of urgency, add some sense of scarcity. You know, I have, I have 20 sessions available this month, you know, book before they're gone, something like that you might consider putting in there. I believe that would be, um, now I actually think that you're as seen at, um, I, I think that those, you, you obviously have some very credible ones. I mean, Harvard University, University of, uh, uh, you know, Siemens, um, McKesson, some of the other ones I think are probably not necessary. I don't think you need two lines of that. Like, it's like, look, if people at Harvard are listening to me, you probably should too. Sure. So I think one one line of those probably would be good enough. Um, I, I like the idea of not having full color, um, um, full color versions of that. If you can create it to be black and white, just have the black and white logo. You're, all, all you're accomplishing in that whole section, which is probably 15% of your page, is social proof. Gotcha. That's all that that section is doing. It's just adding credibility, social proof. It's, um, you know, and, and, you know, candidly, I think you, there's too much there. I don't know that you need a whole lot. So find, find the ones that are most um, compelling and, and put them on one line, probably four or five of them at most. And just gotcha. one, one clean line, logos the same size. Ideally, I mean, it could be like a grayed out background with white. Um, you don't want everyone's attention going directly to there. You want it going to the call to action, which is book the session now. Okay. What else? Any other observations or insights or input you all might have? See how cool this is? People helping people. It's powerful stuff. I, my insight, hot no pun intended, is that this is like your almost your mini pitch. Like you're really trying to put yourself out there to see if someone's interested immediately or not interested immediately. So if you've got a pain point, ask them if that's their pain point. If that's their pain point, then they're going to want to investigate more. But if you don't give, if you, if you just give too much information, you're allowing them to make their decision before they even speak with you. And that's kind of what you don't want to do. I'm not saying don't waste your time on appointments that aren't necessary, sure. but if you never get someone on the phone then you never get someone on the phone to have the opportunity to explain this SaaS imp implementation, the change management and the digital transformation. So if you give them an opportunity to ask them a question that they can answer and their answer may be, no, I don't need that. And that's okay because you've taken that off the table and you're not wasting your time. But if you can ask them something that's important and is a pain point for them, they're more engaged with what you have to offer them. And then they're going to read further. There's so just kind of my question, thoughts. Are you saying, are you saying, um, are you saying to do that with the flyer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I mean, you know, I, I'm in advertising too. People sure. aren't going to read this. I, I mean, okay. they're, they're just, they're just not going to, you have like a, you literally have a split second to get their attention. It's like your tagline, like what's the tagline for you? And is it applicable to someone at that point? Because if they're not in that sales cycle, whatever the sales cycle is, everyone has their sales cycle, whether you're buying a new dress or you're buying a new car, if they're not in your sales cycle at that point, they don't matter. It's not to say that eventually you won't be in their sales cycle, but if you can give them something and they're right in that moment, they're going to take action on what you deliver them. So question for you guys, and, and I know we've talked about this. I've been struggling with this, right? Consulting um, consulting is, is broad. So, so the problems that we can solve are broad. Um, and, and so this was kind of my way of, of kind of niching down into these are specific problems. Um, Cause I, I mean, I had a conversation with my mom too over the weekend and, and uh, it was a discouraging conversation from a mom standpoint, but um, it, it's, it's, you know, no, nobody buys consulting without it being attached to something else. Right. I don't necessarily believe that, but I think there is some truth in that. So I, I guess the question is, you know, I'm, I'm fine with throwing this away if it's not helpful. Um, but the, I'm, I'm struggling with how to engage people in a way that 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 uh, uncovers their need for consulting, if that makes sense. Um, I have an idea. You know, you you can do posts on yeah. LinkedIn, and you could tailor make them like have one for each of them. That way, you're reaching everybody, um, and you can send it out to just your contacts. That way your post will pop up. Um, hopefully other people will comment or like on it and it will kind of just take a life on its own, you know? Sure, sure. So you're but saying that way you can like really target each each section in here because I used to do consulting and I totally get your frustration because it is so broad. So if you broke it down into three different things, that I think that you would really capture a lot of people that way. Okay, that makes sense. I, I think that's a re that's such a that's kind of like playing chess like that that's a really smart way of doing it you know again you're drawing people's attention to that which you want to draw their attention to so it's like if you're focused on change management you do a post on change man shocking coming from the content queen right, right. so <laughs> so you know put, put a focus on change management an article you know adding value to people's world and then when they see this, it's like, oh yeah, she, the change management girl. Okay, right. cool. Another mm -hmm. one is digital transformation. You do a whole separate post and whole different engagement on that. Then when they land on this page, they can do this. Mm -hmm. I have another. I have another idea for you, Sanders, and I think this can help as well. Okay. When you're doing Loom videos, this would be a lovely second page to click on. So you might start with their profile so that's what they see when they pull the video up sure. and you do that connection and then when you make you know the transition moment when you say i'm not sure if it makes sense to connect but click now you've got this up here okay. and this says you know what i my gift to the world because that's what i asked you to do right ask yourself right. the question like what's my gift to the world right what can i add value with and this is what you came up with so you can say so my gift to all new connections is I'm willing to set aside X number of minutes or whatever period of time. And here's what we do. I call it the insight session. And what you're going to get from the session and have this on the screen, adhere to all these advertising and marketing uh, things that have been talked about. But now you're on the video. You have their attention. They will watch it, okay. right? Have the bullet points and say, if that applies to you, click the button, schedule your insight session. And I can't wait to talk to you. If not, it's good just to be a connection on LinkedIn, right? It's like that, that just kind of just, you know, really smooth, nice, nice smooth operator. It's all you're coming in with. It makes sense. But you got it, but you do want this to be the, the number you, you've got to reduce, you got to get rid of like 90% of the words on this page. Sure thing. Yeah. And that, and that's hard. And another question to ask yourself, if, if you could only have three words, that represent what, what they walk away with, only three words. Kind of to Kathy's point, like you've got a moment to capture their attention. If there's only three words, what will they walk away from your session with? And you only get three words. 
So what what would that be like as, as we kind of think through this right now? What's three? What's word number one? Insight. <laughs> okay, insight. Good. Self descriptive. What else? Um, action plan. I know that's two words. Okay, sure that works. What else? I think there's got to be something about time in there because what Seandris is, um, you know, and all consultants that I've worked with throughout years on big ad campaigns, this kind of thing is, you know, the whole reason you're hired in the first place is because you're literally taking something off of somebody's table that they don't want to deal with or that they don't know how to deal with. Sure. So those two pain points are they don't know how to do it or they don't want to. So that's where you have that authority to say like, and I'll save you time. Um, you know, that's like, I mean, it's, you know, it, it may be cliche, but at the same rate, that gives you the authority, like in your photo, it, that's what your photo says is I know how to save you time. Sure. You know, so that's like your effective, you know, one of your three word, uh, you know, like focus points on that flyer is, uh, you know, just like Joe said, at the end of that loom video, you know, I'll bring these three things to the table. And the most important at the end is I will save you time because I've been here, done this. You can, you can trust in my authority over this topic. Sure. Yeah. I, I think, I think that's great. I think if you kind of think in those terms and say, okay, and maybe the first two might become one kind of one thing, actionable insights. It's not just insight, it's actionable insights. So take your action plan and insight and it's actionable insights. And then something else in time savings, whatever it might be. And then when you're drawing their attention to that, you can even explore and split test. Sometimes people ask me, Sandris, why do you do this for free for so many people? And what I say is, and then kind of launch into the address that concern right off the bat. Okay. I really think you're on to something with the Sandris. This is your gift to the world. This is your ability to think through these things. You have a tremendous amount of experience. You should feel confident in the value that you're going to provide to people. You're knowing you, you're probably going to provide more than what they ever hoped for. And they're going to walk away going, she is amazing. And so I think, you know, refine this per the suggestions that we just had. Um, sure. You know, if you, if you need to, if you're not like a graphic designer, like I suck at graphic design for the most part. So I love templates, like give me a template. I can fill it with all kinds of words, but you, you might even consider finding somebody on like Fiverr or Upwork or something and say, Hey, I'm going to hire three of you. I'm going to work with the one that, you know, looks the best or whatever it might be. So take, take it, put into action. And I can't wait to hear how the results go from it. Sounds good. Thank you guys very much. At, you can probably hear, um, cause I think plus Delta is great. I think they have a great product, but, uh, the, the consulting cell, um, especially in the space of change management, um, it, it's welcome. That, and we have more people joining. <laughs> What's that? Sorry, I'm doing two meetings at once. <laughs> I'm on it. I can't miss that. I'm on it. <laughs> so I think I think one of the things, you know, Sandra's too to, to keep in mind with this is, you know, this is your gift that you're giving to people. Um, sure. You know, do the best job you can. And that is, that's the skill for you specifically. The skill in sales is going to come down to, can I, am I adept enough at uncovering what their needs are? That's sure. the game that you get to play. Yes, it's right. difficult. Consulting in general is difficult. Sure. But that's that's what makes your job your job. Otherwise, a robot could do it. Right. We don't want robots doing this. Right. Right. So that's your that's your skill is in that conversation. You're uncovering what it is, and then you're going to talk about what it looks like to move forward. So again, if I can ask the right question, allow space for an answer, that's how we can establish if there's a relationship to move forward together. Sounds good. Well, sadly, we're at the end of our time. This is so much fun. I always love this with all of you. So hopefully you all join next week. Uh, feel free to ping your coaches and let them know. If you guys ever wanted to say like, we're always looking for like people's comments on how we can improve these trainings and all that kind of stuff. So please like send those our way so that we can, uh, we can help you at an even deeper level. Proud of all of you. Mindset for this week. Don't give up. You keep plugging away. That's where the success comes from. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.